Howdy everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jake and I'm a farrier. And today we're going to be putting new shoes on Dreamer, who is a Frisian gelding. Now if you watched my last video, you saw me do a barefoot trim on another Frisian. And the obvious difference in this video is that this horse has steel shoes on to protect his feet. So here I'm going to run you guys through the typical process of putting new shoes on a horse. And throughout I'm going to explain why shoeing is necessary for proper hoof care. So you guys gotta understand that whole books have been written surrounding the complex answers to that one question, why do we shoe horses? And I'm gonna give you guys the simple and most important answer, and that is to protect the foot. Humans have been nailing on pieces of metal to the bottom of horses' feet for 2,000 plus years to protect the foot. And that is the main answer. Now I'm going to put a link to the last video because there I explain a little bit about the growth of the hoof and about that natural wearing out process that happens when a horse is barefoot. So horses feet grow at all different rates. And while this is an incomplete science, we do know some of the things that affect that rate of growth. The main one being genetics, but also nutrition or the diet of the horse and the environment which that horse lives in. So all of these things have an effect on how fast or slow that hoof will grow, but they also have an effect on the structural durability of that foot. Or in other words, it has an effect on the overall strength and ability of that foot to cope with the pressure or forces that are being put on it. And that would include things like the horse's body weight or its activity level, and the terrain that it lives in. So the next question is, what do we do for those horses whose feet can't support them through all of those conditions? Well, you guessed it, we can put a shoe on. And that shoe creates a barrier between the rough ground and the horse's foot. And not only that, but it will also change how the weight of the horse is distributed on the foot because of the shape of the shoe. So here you see me nipping off the excess growth on a part of the foot known as the hoof wall. Now the hoof wall is the main load bearing structure of the foot. And it's very hard and very durable and that is where I want my horse to bear most of its weight. Is right there around through the hoof wall. And yes, there is a nice clean nipper run. Very satisfying, we love that. Anyways, as I was saying, I'm going to shape the shoe to match up with the perimeter of the hoof wall so that the weight of the horse is distributed down through the hoof wall onto that shoe. And in a future video, I hope to run you guys through more specifically the individual parts of the foot that I deal with in the trim. So now I want to get into more of the different types of shoeing that are out there. And to start off, I just want to say, not all farriers shoe horses, guys. There are farriers out there that just trim and leave horses barefoot. And that's great. My question has always been, what happens when that's not enough anymore? Well, that's when someone who knows how to shoe horses comes in. So on this channel, I don't really want to get into all the trendy products and methods that are out there in the farrier world today. What I want to open you guys up to is just the good principles of fundamental horseshoeing. Now I want to talk about the main type of shoeing I do, which is hot shoeing, not to be confused with ugly shoeing, which is far less attractive. Sorry for my bad jokes. No, hot shoeing in comparison with cold shoeing, and the difference is pretty simple. Hot chewing is where, prior to shaping the shoe, I heat it up in a forge to bright hot. Hot enough to where that shoe is easily molded with a hammer and tongs over the horn of an anvil. And it's because of the high temperature at which that steel is heated to that I'm able to be very precise in how I shape that shoe to the horse's foot. And not only that, I also expend far less energy in getting that shoe to the final shape compared with shaping a shoe cold, which forces me to take bigger hammer swings, more hammer swings, in order to get a similar result. 
Now, with cold shoeing, as the name suggests, you are not heating up the shoe. And because you are not heating up the shoe, instead of working over an anvil, you're working over a device known as a stall jack, typically. And while cold shoeing requires far less setup and less resources, you are also far more limited in your ability to shape that shoe, not to mention the expenditure of energy in order to obtain a similar result is far higher. You will spend more time and more energy to get that shoe shaped to the foot. Now that being said, cold shoeing has its time and its place. I've nailed on plenty of cold shaped shoes and that is because it is far preferable in many cases for that horse to get a cold shaped shoe than to not get a shoe at all. And I'm not even here to rag on cold shoers. There are farriers who make whole careers out of shaping all their steel cold. And there's types of shoes like aluminum shoes that have to be shaped cold because in a forge they would just melt. Now that being said, people ask me all the time why I hot shoe versus cold shoe. And there's a whole list of reasons. But the number one I give them is I'd like to still have feeling in my elbows and my wrists when I'm in my 50s. I'm currently in my 20s. Farrier work in general is already very hard on your body. So you can imagine how adding hours a day of banging cold steel over a stall jack can greatly add to that. So here you guys will see me utilize another one of the benefits of hot shoeing and that's burning on. And burning on is where once I've trimmed the horse's foot and got it as level as I can with my rasp, I can use the hot shoe to burn an even more level surface and a tighter contact onto the bottom of the foot. Now the better contact that the bottom of the foot has with that shoe, the less likely the horse is to be able to step that shoe off. Not to mention, when I burn on, I also kill and lock out any bacteria that's on the surface of the foot. Now there's this whole other element, guys, to hot shoeing that I won't have time to fully explain in depth in this video. And that is where the real art of blacksmithing meets the horseshoeing world. So to introduce you to that, I gotta explain the difference between keg shoes and handmade shoes. Now, keg shoes are machine-made shoes. They're the corporate shoe. You can go and buy them on the shelf at a feed store or order them online. And keg shoes do the job, majority of the time. Keg shoes are, are great. Majority of the horses that I shoe are in keg shoes. These shoes that I'm nailing on right now are keg shoes. So just like I've been saying, guys, how horses' feet come in all different sizes, therefore, keg shoes also come in all different sizes. And just like how human shoes have a corresponding number, keg shoes also have a number corresponding to their size. And with this particular brand, this horse wears size 4 shoes on all 4 feet. Now, while keg shoes do have their limitations, they are very convenient for the farrier. It is very convenient to be able to just go buy or order a big box of horseshoes. And in the hands of a capable blacksmith, there are numerous modifications that you can make to a keg shoe in order to meet the particular needs of a horse. A horse that might have a specific lameness or condition. Now on the other side of this, there's handmade horseshoes. And guys, that is where I literally take a piece of steel bar stock and turn it into a shoe. And I'm going to do a whole video on that process in the future. So it does take a great deal more of knowledge to build your own shoes by hand. And it does also take more time. Now as far as advantages go, with that knowledge, you are able to custom measure and fit that shoe to a specific foot on a horse. In comparison with a keg shoe where you are typically just fitting the closest size available for that foot. Not to mention there are numerous types of handmade shoes that a farrier can build to meet the particular needs and conditions of certain horses. And I hope to show you guys more of that side of the farrier world in a future video. But that is it for now, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button. Leave a comment below or subscribe. I got more of these videos coming, so I hope to see you in the next one. But until then, adios.